Hello, everyone. So today um, I'm going to give you uh, more examples for the LP modeling uh, with Lindo and Lingo. Um, so let me share my screen first. And this is my slides for today, right? Okay. Uh, I think. Okay, so this is the uh, right slide for today. Um, okay, so the uh, first example is the post office uh, scheduling um, problem. Uh, so this is about the uh, scheduling of uh, uh, the full post office staff members. Um, so um, let's suppose uh, Las Cruces post office wants to hire uh, full-time employees and they require the different numbers of full-time employees on different days of the week. Um, and the number of full-time employees required on each day uh, is given in this table. And um, the union rules um, state that um, each full-time employees uh, must work five consecutive days and then uh, receive two days off, okay? So for example, the employee who works uh, Monday to Friday must be off on Saturday and Sunday, okay? And the post office uh, wants to meet its daily requirements using only full-time employees. So let's assume that they are not uh, hiring the part-time employees at the moment. So um, as an uh, operations research analyst, or industrial engineer, uh, or in general, you are required to formulate an uh, LP model that the post office can use uh, to minimize the total number of full-time employees that must be hired, okay? So that's the problem description for this. Um, so as a user, um, we need to define the decision variables, right? Okay, so um, before giving the correct formulation of this problem, um, let's uh, begin by discussing an incorrect uh, formulation first, okay? So um, some of you might uh, begin by defining the decision variable uh, to be the number of employees working on each day, um, then uh, they reason that the total number of um, full-time employees gonna be the number of employees working on each day of the week, right? So um, what I mean is uh, some of you, uh, Okay, so some of you might um, define the decision variable in this way. Uh, so there is the number of employees working on each day of the week, okay? So Monday is gonna be the day number one, Tuesday, day number two, and Wednesday, day number three, and, uh, and so on. So uh, day number seven is gonna be the Sunday, okay? So um, in this case, the total number of full-time employees it's going to be the number of employees working 
on Monday, right? Plus total number of employees working on Tuesdays, right? Total number of employees working on Wednesdays and so on, right? Up to total number of employees working on Sunday, right? And this leads to the following objective function. So the basically the objective is to minimize the total number total number of full time employees that must be hired, right? And the constraints to ensure that the post office has enough full time uh, employees working on each day of the week, uh, you may add these constraints okay, for each day, okay? So for example, for Monday, this constraint is gonna be X1 is greater than or equal to 17 is required because of here, right? Total number of employees required on Monday has to be at least 17. Likewise, for Tuesday, it's gonna be X2 has to be greater than equal to 13 and so on, right? And also adding the um, integer restrictions for each decision variable um, because you cannot hire, for example, 2.567 uh, people on certain day, right? So it's gotta be the integer number, right? So you need to add integer restriction for each decision variable, uh, yielding the following uh, LP model, right? Okay, so how do you think? Do you think this is correct? Or what is wrong with the current formulation? Actually, there are at least two flaws in this formulation. The first, the objective function is not the total number of full-time employees, okay? Actually, the current objective function counts each employees, how many times? Five times, not just once. For example, each employee who start work on Monday works Monday through Friday. And that is included in X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5, right? With the current um, decision variable, using the current decision variable. And the second flow, so in the current formulation, the um, variables X1, X2 through X7, so interrelated each other. And this interrelation between the variables is not captured by current set of constraints. Okay, that's the problem. So for example, some of the people who are working on Monday, so I'm talking about the X1 people, they will uh, be working on Tuesday. This means that X1 and X2 are interrelated. However, our current constraints do not indicate that the value of X1 has any effect uh, on the value of X2, right? So the key to uh, correctly formulating this problem is to realize that the primary decision of the post office problem is not how many people are working each day, but we are more interested in how many people begin working on each day of the week, okay? So with this in mind, we define the decision variable uh, as below. Okay, so this is the correct way 
to define the decision variable for this post office scheduling problem. So we define X variable indicating number of employees beginning work on each day. So the keyword is here, beginning work each day, okay? So like before, day number one is Monday, day number two is Tuesday, day number three is Wednesday, day number four is Thursday, and so on, okay? So we do need seven different decision variables because there are seven days in a week, right? And here, X1 is the number of people beginning work on Monday. And these people work Monday through Friday. Is that correct? So to determine the objective function, note that the total number of full-time employees is gonna be the number of employees who start working on Monday, plus number of employees who start work on Tuesdays and so on, right? So because each employee begins working on exactly one day of the week, this expression does not double count the employees. So um, let, let's visualize um, each decision variable this way. So X1 people does work from Monday through Friday, right? So they work, um, okay, maybe let's do this way. So let me make a small table. Um, so this is Monday column, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, okay? And we have seven decision variables, right? Oh, this is five, six, seven, right? So excellent people start working on Monday and they work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all right? Okay, so let's make a table this way. Four, five, six, and seven. And Tuesday, so X2 people uh, beginning work on Tuesday. So they work five consecutive days and then two days off, right? Likewise, X3 start working on Wednesday through Sunday. And X4 people start from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and the following Monday, right, steer is gonna work, but Tuesday and Wednesday off, right? And X5 people start from Friday and then work until the following Tuesday, right? So if I continue on, X6 people start from Saturday and continue work until the following Wednesday. And next seven people start from Sunday and we're going to tear the following Thursday. Is that correct? Okay. Okay, so based on this decision variable, we're gonna come up with the same objective function as before. Um, but this time, our objective function does make sense, right? Because we want to minimize the total number of full-time employees that must be hired. And of course, this expression does not double count uh, the employees, right? Okay, so let's move on.
uh, to the constraint size. So according to the problem description, the post office must ensure that each employee is working on each day of the week. For example, at least 17 employees must be working on Monday, and at least 13 employees must be working on Tuesday, and so on, right? Okay, then let me ask you, uh, who is working on Monday? Everybody except the employees who begin working on Tuesday or on Wednesday. How do I know? So coming back to this table that we just drawn. So I'm asking that who's working on Monday. So if you look at this Monday column, we can easily answer for that. So um, everybody except the employees who begin work on Tuesday, right? Which is X2 people and who start working on Wednesday. They are X3 people. So they get respectively uh, Sunday and Monday off and Monday and Tuesday off, right? So these are the people who's working on Monday. They are X1 plus X4 plus X5 plus X6 plus X7. That's the total number of people who is working on Monday. Does that make sense? Because, you know, each, uh, so in this example uh, problem, we assume that each full-time employees must work five consecutive days and then receive two days off, okay? So we know that the total number of employees working on Monday is going to be X1 plus X4 plus X5 plus X6 plus X7, okay? And to ensure that at least 17 employees are working on Monday, we require that the constraint X1 plus X4 plus X5, X6, and X7 has to be greater than equal to 17. Does that make sense? So adding the similar constraints for the uh, other six days of the week and the sign restrictions, we have a complete math formulation like this, okay? So for example, when you look at the Tuesday constraint, the left-hand side, X1 plus X2, plus X5, X6, and X7 is coming from this, right? When you look at the Tuesday, X1 plus X2 plus X5 plus X6 plus X7, these are the total number of people working on Tuesday. And that number has to be at least 13. Right? That's why the Tuesday constraint is going to be like this. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let's work on Lindo and Lingo to solve this problem, okay? So, um, uh, one sec. Okay, so I'm gonna open Lingo. Last time I showed you how to download this program, right, Lingo, and how to use both Lindo and Lingo, right? Um, so, 
Okay. Let me resize the windows. So I'm gonna use this Okay, so first let's use Lindo. Okay, so because the top of this um, windows showing the Lingo model, so we cannot use this um, window for Lindo. So for you uh, to do that, um, go to the server and choose options and make sure in the interface uh, menu and within this file format, uh, Windows small box, choose LTX, parenthesis, Lindo and apply, okay. Okay, now we open the new window and now it does say Lindo model. So we should be able to use Lindo input. In here, okay. So um, last time we talked about the basic syntax of Lindo. So Lindo always start with uh, min, minimize, or max, maximize. Okay, and we want to minimize the total number of employees hired, right? So um, that's gonna be minimize. Mean, let me uh, resize the font a little bit so this is better. Okay. Okay. And um, so we do have two choices here. Um, we can use either min or minimize, okay? And right after that, we can write down the objective function. This, it's gonna be very straightforward, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, x5. x6, x7. Okay, like that. And Lindo does need the word ST or subject to. Before you type in the each constraint. Okay, so let's uh, write the Monday constraint. First, it's gonna be X1 plus X4, X5, X6, and X7. And must be greater than or equal to 17. That is the minimum number of employees required uh, on Monday. So now we're gonna put the comments. This is the Monday. <laughs> okay, Monday constraint. Likewise, Tuesday constraint, we are going to have X1 plus X2 plus X5 plus X6 plus X7. Must be greater than or equal to 13. And this is gonna be Tuesday, right? Oh, sorry. Okay, and Wednesday, we're going to have X1, X2, X3, X4, X6, right? And X7, greater than, equal to, 15, that is the uh, Wednesday constraint. And Thursday constraint, 
it's going to be x1, 2, 3, 4, and x7. It's going to be greater than or equal to 19. Thursday. And Friday, it's going to be x1, 2, x3, x4, and x5, greater than or equal to 14. And Saturday, it's going to be x2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? And it's going to be 16 for Saturday. And Sunday, x3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Sunday. Okay. And let's manage the space uh, just for the easier readability. Two. And we are going to have that, right? Yeah, you, you don't need to do this, but um, for me, this is easier to see um, in case if there is an error, then I can easily see uh, where it is, okay? So keep in mind the uh, left-hand side of each constraint um, is referred to this, right? This table that we developed, right? Okay. Now we're going to put the ending mark, E and D, and press this button. Now we already got the optimal solution. Okay, our optimal solution is 22.33. Um, and this is our optimal solution. Here, the problem is the Lindo recommend us to hire the X2 people, like 5.33 people um, recommend to start working on Tuesday. Obviously, we cannot do this, right? We cannot uh, technically hire 5.33 people. That's because we didn't include the integer restriction, even though we are considering the number of people uh, representing the uh, each decision variable, right? So here, what you need to do is to add sign restriction, right? Integer variable restriction. So actually in this case, we are going to add general integer variable restriction. So for lin for Lindo, it's going to be GIN. And you can explicitly list the decision variable x2, GIN, x3, GIN, x4, right? GIN x5 or gin x6 gin x7 right and then survey now we got the optimal solution which does make sense right so all of the decision variable has the general integer values so it does recommend us to hire um, the, the full-time employees 
on Monday, uh, six people will start working on Monday and another six people will start working on Tuesday. And on Thursday, seven people uh, will start work. Um, and then Saturday, three and Sunday, only one person start working, okay? Uh, and of course, in this case, uh, because all of the decision variable we defined um, are required to be general integer values. So actually, you can do this way, okay? So in this case, Lindo take the first seven decision variables in our model need to be uh, general integer, okay? So of course, in this case, we're gonna have the same optimal objective function values and optimal solution, okay? So either is fine, okay? Uh, now let's move on to lingo. So in order to use lingo, again, um, we're gonna choose options. And then this time you're going to choose LG4. Parentheses, intended, extended, okay? And press apply, okay button. And then we need to open the new window. Now, the top of this new window saying that lingo models, right? So within this new window, we should be able to work on the lingo uh, model, okay? Because we are going, we are using very similar format. I'm going to just copy and paste to our new window and modify the model, okay? And you remember last time, like lingo, unlike lindo, the lingo does recognize mean or max. Lingo cannot recognize, minimize or maximize. So you have only two choices, okay? Uh, representing your objective function. So in our case, uh, we want to minimize the total number of employees hired. So it's gonna be mean, and we're gonna put the equal sign before you type in your objective function, okay? And if you remember last time, uh, each statement uh, in the lingo model has to be terminated with semicolon, right? So we're gonna do this. Oh, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. Okay, like this. This is much better, right? Okay. Okay, and you remember lingo does not require subject to or ST between the objective function and the constraint set. So you have to remove this, okay? Otherwise, lingo will give you an error message, okay? And what else? Uh, okay, so here uh, we're gonna put the semicolon indicating the um, end of each statement, okay? And even the comment, end of comments, you're gonna put the semicolon, okay? Otherwise, see here, because you didn't put the semicolon after the Tuesday, so lingo does take everything after that as the comment, okay? So you be sure to terminate each statement with semicolon, even including the comment, okay? And uh, the syntax aware feature of Lingo also um, uh, tells you that because in this case, um, all the green colors are the comments 
and definitely you don't want this be the comments, right? So you need to uh, put the semicolon at the end of each statement, okay? Uh, what else? Oh, uh, and um, for the integer, general integer restriction, if you remember, for lingo, it has to be included before the ending mark, okay? And the syntax for the general integer restriction for lingo, slightly different. You need to put at gene and inside parentheses, you're gonna specify each decision variable need to be uh, general integer variable. Again, even after the in integer restriction, you're gonna um, put the semicolon, okay? So this is what you need to do. At gin, right? And you're gonna put, what did I do? Okay. So I'm gonna complete this. Okay. And what else? I think that's it, right? So I'm gonna press this. Okay, now we got the same optimal solution, okay, as before. So you can always test out. Um, so for example, let's see um, what's gonna happen if you include the integer variable restriction, general integer restriction after the ending mark. See, for lingo, it doesn't take the integer restriction, right? That's why we have couple uh, real values in the optimal solution, okay? So be sure to include the general uh, integer restriction before the ending mark for the case of lingo, okay? Not for the lindo. So for lindo, you're gonna include the general integer restriction uh, after the ending mark, okay? So I think um, that's the lindo and lingo model for the post office scheduling problem, okay. Now, uh, let's get back to our uh, slide. Okay, so this is our second example problem. Um, that's this chess snack food. Uh, company example. Uh, okay, so the chess, uh, so in, the, in this example, a company, uh, chess snack foods, uh, markets four different brands of mixed nuts, okay? And the four brands of nuts are called the pawn, knight, bishop, and king. And each brand contains a specified ratio of peanuts and chestnuts. And this table uh, lists the number of ounces uh, of the two different nuts uh, contained in each pound of each brand. And also the price at which the company can sell a pound of each brand, okay? Um, and the company, the chess has contracted with suppliers to receive um, a certain amount per day. 
And those amounts are the 750 pounds of uh, peanuts and 250 pounds of chestnuts, okay? And, um, and in this problem, uh, you are required to de determine the total number of pounds of each brand uh, produced each day to maximize the total revenue, okay? Uh, of course, without exceeding the available supply of nuts, okay? So that's the problem uh, we're given. Uh, okay, so actually, oh. let me include uh, one blank slide. So I'm gonna delete this, and this. So I can write the LP model here, okay? Okay, so here, first, uh, we want to define the decision variable, right? Because the test set foods uh, want to decide how many pounds of each brand must be produced, right? So we define, uh, let's say, X1. Xi actually, Xi represents the number of pounds of each brand produced. Of course, in that case, I equals one represents pawn two the knight and three will be bishop and four will be king. Okay, in order here, yeah. pawn, knight, bishop, and king. Okay. And our objective function is to maximize the total revenue, right? Yeah. So using the decision variable that we just defined, um, that's gonna be maximize. And you're going to use the bottom row, right? Selling price for constructing our objective function. So it's gonna be two, three, four, five, two X one, 3x2, 4x3, 5x4, right? So it's very straightforward, right? That's our objective function. And for the constraint, basically we are going to use the first two rows of this table, right? So just make sure the number of pounds of peanuts and chestnut used must be less than equals the total number of supplies of each, uh, each nuts, right? Peanuts and chestnuts. So we are going to have two different constraints, right? One for peanut and another, uh, the, uh, the other for chestnuts. So for the peanuts, it's gonna be 15, 10, 6, 2, right? You're going to use these numbers, 15, 10, 6, 2. So 15, 10, 6, 2. And it has to be less than or equal to the 750. Okay, that's the supply amount. So it has to be less than or equal to that. 750, right? But here uh, you have to be careful because we have to divide 
the sum of the left hand side 2015 to convert from ounces to pounds right so actually we're going to divide by 16 here or multiply 16 on your right hand side either is fine okay so let's do that so the first constraint um oops is for peanut constraint, right? And second constraints would be, would be the chestnut. And it's going to be 1, 6, 10, 14. So 1, 6, 10. 14, right? And this time the supply amount is 250. So it has to be less than or equal to 250. And again, we're gonna multiply 16 to convert from um, ounces to pounds, okay? And of course, uh, you're going to add sign restrictions, the formulation, right? That's going to be each decision variable has to be uh, greater than or equal to zero for four I values. So we're going to take one, two, three, and four, right? So combine all together, this is going to be the uh, complete LP model, okay? Okay, now uh, let's work on Lindo and Lingo model for this. So, okay. So let's work on Lindo first. I'm gonna choose this, apply, okay. And open the new window, making sure we have Lindo model up here, okay. And then I'm gonna increase the font size. Okay, so um, it's gonna be max or maximize, right? Um, two, x1 plus 3x2 plus 4x3 plus 5x4, okay? And subject to, or simply you can type st, that's fine, okay? And input our first constraint is 15 times x1 plus 10 times x2 plus 6 times x3 plus 5 times x4. So less than equal to uh, 750 times 16. How much is that? Okay, it's going to be 12,000, right? And second constraint for chestnut, it's gonna be 15 X1 plus, sorry, this X1 plus six X2, 10 X3, 14 X4, right? Less than equal to 250 times 16. So it's gonna be um, one third of 12,000, which should be 4,000, right? Okay. Uh, I think that's it, right? And the ending mark. Okay, so we have optimal solution here. So let's save that window. And then now let's move on to Lingo. 
So go to solver option. This time we choose LG4, apply OK, and open the new window. Now we have Lindo, Lingo model. And I'm going to just copy everything and paste here. Okay. Okay. So for Lingo, we do need equal sign, right? Right after max or min. And Lingo does require asterisk as the symbol of multiplication. So we're gonna put this, right? And each statement of Lingo must be terminated with semicolon. And in Lingo, ST or subject two is not required. Okay, so you, you must uh, eliminate this. Again, don't forget asterisk as the, uh, the multiplication symbol. And here, like that, right? And uh, just for practice, you remember, Lingo does uh, take the um, multiplication symbol and the division symbol, even parentheses, right? So why don't you use that? So originally, it, it is 750 times 16, right? So it's gonna be times 16, okay? Or even if you want, you can use parentheses. There is no point to using that, but okay. I just want to show you that. Here, we have 250, right? Okay, now maybe I can do this, like that. Oh, and even in Lingo, you don't need to um, locate all of the uh, decision variable to the left-hand side. So for example, uh, I can move this um, 14 times x4 to the right-hand side. So we're gonna have 14 times x4. Okay, yeah. And then we can remove this. Okay, for example, like that. And I almost forgot the semicolon at the end of each statement. So let's solve it. See, we got the optimal solution. Exactly the same optimal solution. Here, Lindo. See, we got the same optimal solution. Objective function value is 2,666.667, right? And from Lingo, oh. okay, from Lingo, we got the same optimal solution and same objective function value, right? So, okay, that's it for the Lindo and Lingo model for our second example problem. Okay, so um, that's for the um, today's lecture. Um, and um, next time, I will gonna uh, talk about the lingo sets, okay? So, Okay, so um, just to let you know, the lingo sets uh, is an, another um, type of the input for lingo. Um, and uh, I gotta tell you that uh, compared to lindo, uh, the most powerful feature of lingo 
uh, is is ability to model very large systems using uh, with using sets. So next time we are going to talk about that option. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. I will see you next time. Bye bye.